All right, my name is John Parello. I'm a senior technical leader in the enterprise networking group, also in the core software group under there. So I'm the software guy in the switching group. Peter, who was speaking before, was low-level hardware. I work with him. I do the software on top of that. As John was saying, I'm talking about the digital ceiling. What the project that we've been working on is uh, digital ceiling specifically for lighting. We're talking a lot about lighting. You look up at the ceiling, there's a lot of things in the ceiling. My, my sort of charge is to work on the enterprise IoT, the things in a building. And when you look up at the ceiling, most of the things in enterprises wind up in the ceiling. All right? Now, we went after lighting because if you look up, the most numerous thing in the ceilings right now is the lights. There are sensors, but by far, the, the ratio is usually two or three to one when it comes to lights to sensors. So we went after lighting first, and it was a natural progression for us because we have, with the, with the advances that we had on some of our switching platforms, UPOE. We had 60 watts per port that we can now push out. It enabled us to, to get into a sweet spot where LED lighting was producing enough light for the amount of power we could push out. We only need about 30 watts in order to do uh, fixtures that are up there. These large fixtures that you see up there need 60, about half that size only need 30 watts. It winds up being a very good platform for things that are going to be going into the building. Now, once we realized we were going to put, we were going to go after this, all the endpoints were going to be there, these IPv6 endpoints that are all going to be in the ceiling, that pushed back on us and saying, what features do we need in our switching platforms in order to enable this? POE was the first one, 60 watts, boom, we got it. But there's other things that we needed in there. The, the features that I'll start to talk about, there are protocols that you need to control these endpoints. It's a Tower of Babel about all the different protocols that are out there. MQTT, XMPP, what low-level transport are you going to use? Are you going to be using wireless, or are you going to be using uh, Zigbee, um, uh, dot .3 AT, or are we going to be using CoAP? We kind of settled on CoAP on one of the features that we're doing, one of the first ones. I'll give you the reasons why we did that in a few, few seconds. The protocols are one of the things we started looking at. The next thing we started seeing is once we are providing power, we're going to need features that enable that power to be resilient. So what we have is perpetual PoE. If, if the switch reboots, we don't want to have to have all the lights go out and then we have to reboot for some reason like that. So perpetual PoE will keep the PoE up. If the switch software reboots, you don't lose any power to the switches, to the lights. You'll get a flicker of it within sub-second and it will be inde inde indetectable to you on that. We have, fast, we have a fast boot where when the switch boots up, it's different, uh, I'll go over the models of it, where some of uh, uh, them we can come up in eight seconds and bypass a lot of the boot, uh, the boot process. Lights, when they're negotiating power, if, people, if you know about LDP negotiation when we're doing the lights, that could take time and we don't want that to happen. So we did two event classifications and we're caching the information that's in there so that, bang, once, once the uh, switch comes up, we don't have to do negotiation, we're going to put the power straight out there. All of these things that we did are feeding back into the switching features. And we did that because of a reference design that I can show you here. We have the endpoints that are on the, uh, on the ceiling that feed into some needed power supply. These things need power, right? Typically what happens now is you run a power line to these things that are in the ceiling and then you run a data, a data line into that, a serial data line. Well, this is converging into logically into an ethernet, an ethernet connection. So the power supply winds up logically being the switch. Then you need some sort of network communication. And again, we don't want to see people wiring this up two times and start doing a serial connection. It makes sense to do this over an IP network for the communication. And then you're going to have these applications on the top and they typically fall into these three buckets building management solutions, the IoT controls that we're starting to see, the analytics, if you will, and then sustainability and energy. It becomes, it becomes very important to monitor these things for the amount of energy that they're doing. All three of those types of applications can go over our network communication, through our power supplies, and power the endpoints. So if you look at what we're positioning for these things from the bottom up, we're working with uh, partners to put chipsets in there that'll have the PoE plus the, con the IoT controls like CoAP built in we're positioning our PoE and UPoE platforms, and we're working with the standards on, and standard implementations here with layer two and layer three protocols that we're embedding into the switch to allow you to get those, those applications at the top. Now, we're positioning our existing switching line, but I'm happy to announce that we're looking for, and we're, we have, that's gonna be coming out in 2016, a line of switches that will be put in the ceiling specifically for this. We will have a, uh, an eight port switch that can plug right into an AC junction and then power the lights right from the switch. So you don't have to do a home run back to the wiring closets. Now, 
Home runs back to the wiring closets with, with our existing switching lines are economically viable and cheaper than the current solutions. And we all will be coming out in 2016 with our new line of switches that can be embedded directly in the ceiling as well to do more of a hub and spoke kind of design. So we are aggressively going after, uh, after this to put in new, uh, the Cisco features in there. Once you have that set up and you sort of have this power infrastructure, you start to get into, well, what am I going to use to control these things? A lot of people start to say, well, I'll stick Wi-Fi on, on, on there and I don't need to. Well, you need to power these things somehow. We think in new construction and deep retrofit, it makes sense to cable these things uh, with Ethernet cables and to use the newer ones. But if you're going into something like a, a remodel of a building, then it might make sense to put Wi-Fi connectors onto these things. One thing I always say is, if, if you have a building and you have a fixed asset, something that doesn't move, then there's no reason to put that on, on, on Wi-Fi or something like that because it's not mobile. The lights don't really move, right? It makes sense to put them through, uh, through a cabled connection on that. So we're positioning that for, for our new line of switch that's going to be coming out and also for, uh, for the digital ceiling, as, as John was talking about. So there are different things that, that when you look at this, we have to look at security of these things, right? And that's one of the biggest uh, things that we're looking at is if somebody grabs a light fixture and then plugs in, we don't want them getting access to the total network on that. So we're putting the, uh, the uh, security features in there. What protocols are we going to use for controls? We're putting that right in on the switching, and we're going to enable people to do that. So we're trying to make the solution uh, something that can be easily integrated into the normal things that we know about, the FCAPs management and all that stuff in your network. This is sort of the architectural pattern that you'll see. It's just sort of what I showed before. You have, your, you have your endpoint devices, you have the protocols and the negotiations that you need for the power, and then you have your access point on the, on the switch. You have your, your built-out network that you have, your network that you normally build out, and then you'll have some access into that network where we're going to want different kinds of applications to be able to pull analytics information and pull control information to go out to the cloud. Once you have this all set up, as John was saying, we're going to have sensors in each one of these lights. The manufacturers put a thing that they call a knockout on a light. It's a one inch by one inch square that you can put in any kind of sensor that you want in the light. So every third light can have a motion detector, could have a temperature connection. Once you have all that, that's a lot of information that's going to be streaming and coming back from all of these fixtures that you see in the ceiling. Once you have those analytic information, you can tell how often a room is being used, how underutilized or how overutilized the space is going to be used. We want to make it easy so that the cloud providers and the things that we have can take that information and then put that up into the Cisco analytics in the Cisco cloud. Okay? That's a general pattern. Once you see that, we say, well, there's a ton of protocols out there. There's a ton of protocols that we can start to look at. We had our own proprietary energy-wise. That was the thing that I worked on. We learned a lot with that. And we had that embedded right in our switches. And we found that that was very similar now to what the open protocol is coming out, which is co-op. And we're aggressively going into that area and putting that on our switches. And I'll talk about how we are going to be putting, uh, uh, as part of the release, a co-op server directly on the switch. Now, if you're not familiar with co-op, you could do a little switch in your head. You could just say, HTTP runs over TCP. Co-op is very similar to HTTP, except it runs over UDP. That same get and post metaphor is in there, but it's made for constrained devi uh, devices um, so that it can be run, I can embed this in each light fixture. A light fixture could be running a little co-op service. You could think of it as like a little, uh, very efficient HTTP server in the endpoint. Well, if every single one of these endpoints is running a co-op server, a little HTTP-like server in there, you're going to want something to naturally aggregate it. The switch that it connects to is the natural aggregation point. That's why we're putting a server, uh, server in there. I'll go over the details of how you get to it. There are other protocols in there. MQTT, that's a publish and subscribe uh, um, protocol. XMPP, that's Jabber. You can start sending messages. We went with co-op because, and that was a decision that, that we sort of made in engineering saying that we can build MQTT and uh, other things over co-op. If we embedded that in the switch, all of the other applications and things that you can see, we could build using that. So we saw it as the lowest level thing that we could use. So we went after that one first. But it's our intention to stay open to all those protocols. So. One of the new things is we have this new co-op proxy. Now, whenever you do anything, all right, any kind of management or any kind of new area, there's these things that you need to look at. You need an information model. What information am I going to go out and talk to when I want to manage something? How do I discover things? What is the security scheme? And what's the transport protocol? So if taking something that you already know, let's look at Wi-Fi. When I, when I put APs all around the building, I need to know what information is to manage that AP that's typically put down in a MIB, and that's the RFC, RFC for, the, uh, for the wireless MIB. 
How do I talk or discover APs? I discovered them through LDP or CDP. How do I talk to the APs? I've talked to them at low level protocol over DTLS, and the protocol is CapLap over, over DTLS. That's how you manage APs when they're in the building, when you have tons of them, right? Well, we looked at the same thing and said, well, if we're going to do that, we're going to need an information model of discovery scheme, security, and transport for, for enterprise IoT. We'll do the same thing. The information model for this, we're coming out with an information model, and we're releasing that as a way of doing a general enterprise IoT. Our discovery scheme we'll be doing is LLDP or two event to classification. We are putting in the same security with DTLS and the protocol will be co-op. So it's similar to what we were doing. That's why we did this approach. So this is what we're saying. The information model will, is something that we're coming out with. The discovery scheme, DTLS, UDP, that's why we went with, with that. And we're embedding that directly on the switch. It means that every switch that we come out with in those platforms, uh, and I'll give the list of the ones that, that we'll have it. We'll have a co-op server on it, and especially our in-ceiling switches that, that, are gonna, that we're positioning that will have that. And the information model that we'll be putting out is, is based on a, an, a, a, a sensor ML, which is being used by the co-op uh, group, which is the core working group at the IETF. And we're working on coming up with a general information model so that if I, look at, if I talk to a light or I talk to a VAV valve or I talk to all the different things in the ceiling, I could say, give me your name, give me, uh, give me your, uh, your current status, what units are you going in, and we can generalize this thing. And we can, we can start to do that HTTP-like uh, get or set on a specific information model. So we're starting to work with that. This way, if I, if I want to go through and I want to collect, just say, all the temperature or the humidity readings or something from, uh, from uh, sensors that are out there, we can sort of unify it. Again, I'll use that HTTP metaphor. HTTP gives you your, your uh, get and post the protocol that the low-level protocol is TCP is TCP, and what are you getting and setting? Pretty much an HTML document, right? Well, in this space, co-ops doing doing sort of the RESTful interface with GET and POST. UDP is the transport, and we're not sending HTML. We're sending out sensor markup language, which will give us a markup language for uh, for putting in a sensor. It's the same sort of metaphor for there, except it's boiled down into into the uh, IoT devices. And you could see why we like this because it's very internet-y, if that's if that's a technical term. It just feels right. It's this get and post. That whole explosion that you saw when people were building websites and building web pages, we're like, yeah, we want to do exactly that for all the things that are in the building. And we feel that if we put these proxies in our switches and we enable the endpoints, then partners will be able to go out there and build all kinds of applications that we can't even dream of yet. Uh, yeah, from questions. your strategic partnership with uh, Philips, uh, do they have this already in place? Or is it a future plan that they... Uh, bring their light bulbs to talk all this. The best thing I can tell you is that when you go to the co-op working groups, yeah. a good third of the of the uh, um, of that is is sponsored by Philips as well. Okay. So so we have been working in conjunction with those people at the, at the IETF. So we're we've got the group. There's also an alliance that we're a part of called the Fair Hair Alliance, which is working on the information models and stuff. So there is alliance of people that are coming together with Philips and also the Open Standards. We're all part of it. Uh, for me, would be the question. Can I already buy a Philips a light bulb that has it, or are they? I'll let John answer that. No, uh, not yet. No, okay. yeah, not yet. Not okay. yet. But right now, they, they can be powered through us. You can buy you can buy those lights that are POE that, that are POE enabled and they're putting out there. But this is where we're going towards. Okay, for sure they will have it in the near future. POE powered first, and you can see what we're doing is we're getting them powered by our switch first. Then we're going to add in the basic things. And you, you, this this is something we, this is a beach we surfed before, right? It's exactly the pattern that we saw in there. Let's get them powered. It's like powering a server, getting the server up, getting HTTP, and pushing it out. Absolutely. So, excuse me. So, yes. So if we're talking about wireless. Uh, of the lighting, so yes. we're talking about Li-Fi uh, protocol? Uh, that's an interesting question, talking about Li-Fi. The Li-Fi is in the news. One of the things that we did when we did this, we did a proof of concept uh, it, with, the, with the UK government uh, where we started doing connected, we call that a connected lighting. It was light as a service that we did. Li-Fi was part of that. The company that's positioned for Li-Fi is pure Li-Fi. And we've been working with them along that thing. You can tell that that's something that we're going to be we're going to be interested in. That's in our wheelhouse. The, right now, in order to get everything sort of ubiquitous, ubiquitous in there, we are just at the point where you need to power the lights. Then you need the LED lights to be installed. And once the LED lights are installed, then you can get the data over it. So my job is like, I, I, that's where I want to get, but I got to get the power first, and then I got to get the lighting fixture, and then I, we'll get there, all right? But Pure Li-Fi is the company that sort of has pioneered with that, and they've been a really great partner. We've been working with them. So the way we look at this uh, with Co-App is that if you're building an application or partners want to build an application, they can speak co-op directly to the endpoint. Let them go straight to the endpoint and, and speak co-op and get the information. Or they can come to our switch 
And when they talk to a switch to, to the co-op proxy server on there, they're going to see all of the information that's all of the information that's on there, uh, that's connected to it. If they go another level up and they talk to one of the, uh, just say, distribution switches, they should see all the other switches that are there and then see all the other endpoints that are there. Right? And then that information should be taken out and then gone into the cloud and for analytic service. So we want to see it uniform all the way through. HTTP at the top, co-op, and then it stretches all the way down to the bottom. This is something that we're real proud of. <coughs> we came up with a metaphor for this. If anybody's ever done an HTTP browse through a file system, you hit a directory, you see the files there. Then you click on the file and you get to the endpoint. That's what we've built into our proxy service. When you browse to the co-op server on a switch, you will see co-op files that are there. Those files are the endpoint lights, and you can go directly to the light. Our switches can be cascaded into sort of a directory metaphor where if you come to a higher level switch, you will then see the other switches that are in there. They look as like the directories, and then you can then browse to the next one and the next one. We feel that if we give that metaphor in there with the co-op service, that that's a general platform where people can build applications and add value on top. All right? And that, that means that the Cisco network can be used as an enabler for this, not just an opaque thing where we're just giving out the power and call it a day. Once you run the proxy servers in there, we're then giving this natural hierarchy that you could browse to and, and walk through and start to get the information from. So that's, that's the thing. It mimics a file system with that co-op. Okay? Um, this is the, the CLI that we've added, and I'm always going to put that in there to show you that this is, is, this is stuff that's going out. This is how you activate the server. You put the server on, you can set up your, your security modes, and it's the full uh, standards compliant um, co-app server, and we're acting as a proxy into the other devices that are on the end, on the endpoints. So you start and, start, your, uh, start and stop your servers, and then you can start to see the different endpoints that are on there. And there'll be varying uh, information that you can see. If you say show co-app resources on that, you would then see the other endpoints that have registered or other directories or switches that have registered into that. Okay? So this is the way you could do, you could see it on the switch. This is all the debugging that you could do on the switch. But the applications that are being built would just naturally start doing the co-op gets and sets. This is the information on the switch that you can help to see to debug it and start to look at it and see, the, see how that proxy server is working. All right? And you would see the endpoints. Like on this switch, you would see the two lighting endpoints that are in there. And you can see those two lighting endpoints that are in there. You can see all the different information that were based on the information model that we're starting to push out. You can see the LLDP information, the sensors, the, the actuator. There's a sensor when you're reading things, and an actuator is what we call something that we change, right? So a light is an actuator that you change, or a reticulating arm, an actuator, something that you can change. That's the information that you get in there. Okay? So. The release information, the things that Cisco is positioning, the features that we're putting on the switch is the co-app proxy server, the persistent PoE, which is a great innovation. Man, if your switch reboots, right, so long as it didn't lose power, if, the, if it just reboots or something like that, or you reboot the switch, we are not going to, you're not going to lose the power to the lights, okay? You're just, in, the lights will stay up, switch will reboot, you won't even see it. Fast PoE, if you do power cycle, it will come up faster on that. And two event classification so that you don't have to wait uh, for the LDP negotiations. We'll cache the information, just do two events. That is something that the Philips lights will be doing. And that they will be coming out and uh, they will be able to do that. You can take a look at that in um, the Enterprise Innovation Lab and on the World of Solutions floor. We'll be showing the Philips lights working with all of this, the two event classification, persistent PoE, and some of the apps, the control apps that are on there. This is the release information on the different platforms that, uh, that we're releasing it. <laughs> You'll see that some of these things are EX. They're listed as EX. The co-op servers, we're releasing out now in the experimental ones. If you want it, you can go get it. Just ask any, any uh, account rep and say, they'll give you the link on it on CCO, and you can pull down the experimental versions on it and get the, the Cisco proxy service. The full non-experimental release will go out in conjunction when we put in our ceiling lights. Uh, that'll be going out. And that'll be going in mid-year. But we put it out now and said, just take it and start using it on there. So that'll be on CCO. You just have to go get it. The other ones, you don't have to. Uh, for the persistent PoE, fast PoE, that's going out as part of our next releases, the next, <coughs> our next release trains. And those are the, the releases that we're doing in there. Okay. Okay. Call to action. There's, there's other sessions that we see. You can go see the keynote that's going to be on Tuesday, on Tuesday. At the same exact time, I go into... Pretty much you've seen the highlights of what we're doing. I go into detail on this uh, with, uh, at the same time. There are other sessions on there as well. There's a presentation in the DevNet zone. Uh, and also I said at the World of Solutions and the Innovation Center, you can actually go and physically see the lights and you can see them being powered by the switch. 